All right, guys, so this is the fifth video in the biochemistry series. Uh, do this for me on this one. When you, when you see the question, pause the video, read it through, and see if you can answer it before I get into it. Because I think if you can, you know, if you got this one down, I think you're really on your way. Uh, this is a really good question. I, I, I really like this one. Uh, so, again, what's our goal? Our goal is to pass step one and learn to tell that story and see if we can get through this biochemistry. All right, guys, so here we go. It says, which of the following is most likely responsible for this child's condition? So <clears throat> you'll see the, uh, the answer choices. Looks like there are um, some enzymes here uh, and a cofactor, I guess, but mainly enzymes. A three-month-old child is seen for initial establishment of care, seen for initial establishment of care, is reported to carry a diagnosis of deficiency dis disorder reported by their newly adopted parents. The child has been eating a special phenylalanine-restricted diet, though the parents report some neurological abnormalities. Serum prolactin levels are slightly elevated. Which of the following is the most likely responsible for this child's condition? <clears throat> All right, so, you know, it's three months old. Uh, there's a deficiency disorder, kind of vague. They're adopted, so we don't know any type of background or, you know, where they came from in the world, uh, per se. Phenylalanine restricted diet. So obviously they're, 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 they're pushing you in that direction, right? So what do we know? We know that phenyl, phenylalanine makes tyrosine, which makes L-dopa, which makes dopa, and I'm sure you're getting sick of this, but it, it, it'll work. Norepinephrine, which makes epinephrine. Phenylalanine to tyrosine, you know, is accomplished by uh, the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase, okay? Tyrosine to L-DOPA is tyrosine hydroxylase. L-DOPA to DOPA, dopamine decarboxylase, and then uh, dopamine to norepinephrine is dopamine beta hydroxylase, okay? And then, of course, norepinephrine to epinephrine, you're getting that phenylethanolamine and methyl and methyltransferase and as well as SAM. All right, so you know those because we get them repetitive over and over and over. And then you also know that you can take a right turn at tyrosine and eventually make your way to the Krebs cycle. Okay, and there's a purpose for all this, guys. So <clears throat> the other key to this, which you see in a lot of the, say, the Q banks, is this guy in this pathway, right? And what's his name? The tetrahydrobiopterin? Tetra, the four, um, hydrobiopterin. And then it's it, okay, it is a cofactor, okay, that helps this process go along. It helps phenylalanine go to tyrosine and tyrosine go to dopa, and then it gets broken down. Well, I shouldn't, I don't want to say it's broken down. i got to watch my terminology on some of these things. And then it gets kind of put back into this in a tetrahydrobiopterin by dihydrobiopterin, okay? Uh, reductase, I'm sorry. Dihydrobiopterin. Uh, biopterin reductase. Uh, you know, it reduces it. And again, here, what makes this one go here? Dihydrobiopterin reductase. Now that's normal, right? That's just flat out, you got to know this. Now back to this question. Deficiency disorder, phenylalanine restricted diet. So, meaning if it's a phenylalanine restricted diet and this is, uh, they got some neurological abnormalities. What are you thinking? Well, we're thinking PKU, right? We're thinking PKU right out of the gate. Now, there's two things <clears throat> that you got to be thinking when if they ever give you the idea of PKU. Number one is going to be the true traditional. Oh, it's just a phenyl, you know, phenylalanine hydroxylase deficiency. Boom, and then you got PKU. True, but what are we going to say when you see the question say that the serum? Uh, prolactin levels are slightly elevated because, you know, say they're they're on some special diet, right? There's some phenyl phenylalanine restricted diet. Well, chances are then they're getting supplemented with tyrosine, so they're they're kind of bypassing this weakness here, right? They're not giving very much of phenylalanine or restricting it, but they're giving tyrosine. So from this point forward, in theory, they should be functioning just right. But this kid still has some some issues per se, right? They have this. They have you know neurological abnormalities, so it's kind of a you know PKU light. <clears throat> but they have the serum prolactin levels are slightly elevated. And I say, how can I explain that? Which of these guys is the one that's going to be that can explain why do I have prolactin levels elevated? Now you got to take a step back and say, prolactin. 
what kind of keeps prolactin in check, right? What keeps the foot on the brake when it comes to uh, prolactin levels? And that's gonna be dopamine, okay? Because normally, <clears throat> when we have dopamine in the, you know, say in the, in the brain and such, it, it can go throughout the body, but we're talking in the brain, the dopamine actually suppresses, it keeps down, okay? It's like a prolactin inhibitory receptor gets activated with the dopamine. So the prolactin stays down based on dopamine. So if I don't have dopamine, what's gonna happen to my prolactin levels? They're gonna go up, right? Now, in psychiatry, when they use the dopamine, the dopamine blockers, you know, the traditional, the Haldol especially, that's the big step one, it's a dopamine blocker. So if I block him and I don't get him out, I'm gonna have an elevated prolactin per se, or I could, you know, I could have an elevated prolactin. Uh, you see it a lot in, uh, not a lot, but more, more so in Risperdal, Risperidone. So <clears throat> back to this question, how does that explain? How does this kid with PKU, what's the issue that would explain why, despite having an, a diet that's, rest, that's rest, uh, restricting phenylalanine and probably supplementing tyrosine, how am I still not producing DOPA? Because why? Is it because phenylalanine hydroxylase? No, that's more traditional because in theory it should be fine. Phenylalanine decarboxylase? Come on guys, I made that one up, right? Um, dihydrobroptin reductase? Let's think about that. If I don't have this guy, what happens? I don't create him or him. So even if I do supplement with tyrosine and restrict phenylalanine, I can make it to this step but if I don't have this cofactor, because I don't have the dihydrobiopterin reductase, am I gonna be able to make L-DOPA and DOPA? No, it's gonna be reduced uh, significantly. It'll be reduced for our purposes. And if I'm not making the DOPA, that explains this elevated serum prolactin. So in this case, this isn't the true phenylalanine hydroxylase causing the problem, which is gonna be your answer choice A, right? It's not that, it's more of a, more of a they wanna make you bite on that. It's going to be, it's the biopterin or the dihydrobiopterin reductase issue. Answer choice is C. Okay. Phenylalanine reductase, again, I made that up. Galactose, I had to put something else other than that one choice I had on that previous video. Um, but again, biopterin, uh, tetrahydrobiopterin. Tetra, uh, What's the other thing that it makes? Right? Tryptophan, we use tryptophan, can make serotonin. What's a cofactor in that process? Biopterin. Okay. Good question, guys, because they want you to bite on PKU, phenylalanine hydroxylase, when in reality it's going to be the biopterin. Okay. I like this question. Mm -hmm.